Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB. In today's video, I'll be talking about everything you need to know before starting interior design or interior architecture. Maybe you're in high school or maybe even younger and you have an interest in interiors, but you want to learn a bit more before committing to it as a career. Or maybe you're deciding between architecture or interiors and you want to know which one is best for you. I'll also be sharing with you guys some things I wish I had known before starting interior architecture school and also just things that I've learned throughout the years that I had no idea about before. And you guys also asked me a lot of questions related to studying in interior design or working in the field of architecture so I'll be answering some of those too. So if you're interested, let's jump in. Okay, so let's start with some misconceptions around the job and just clear some things up. When I was in high school, and in fact, even when I was around eight years old, I knew that interior design was what I wanted to do. However, looking back, I had no idea what the job actually entailed. I thought that the job would consist of picking out fabrics, designing mood boards, choosing furniture, and then decorating a space all to give a final reveal to a client which is about 5% of what the job actually entails. And I think that the main reason people have this misconception, including me back then, is because of all of these makeover shows on TV. They only show you the fun bits and the highlights, if you like. When I applied for my degree, I actually had no idea that interior decoration, interior design and interior architecture were three separate things. Of course, the three areas all interlink with one another and they're not completely different, but there are certainly different aspects to each one. Whereas I just thought that there was this interior design umbrella and all these things fall underneath it, when in actuality it's more like a Venn diagram of three separate things. My course was just called interior design, but in your first year you learn the three main aspects and then in your final year you actually choose one to specialise in and of course I chose interior architecture. Which is something you need to be really careful about when choosing a university course because some courses decide to title themselves interior design when in real life you're only learning interior decoration or some are called interior architecture but you're actually learning all three aspects so it's quite confusing but just make sure you do your research and find out what they're actually going to teach you. I would describe the field of interior design as kind of a spectrum starting with interior decoration then moving to interior design, then onto interior architecture, then architecture of course, and on the opposite side of the spectrum are the structural engineers. And interior architecture, as you can imagine, is much closer to architecture than people realise. Maybe you're like, oh my god, what is the difference? I don't know. But don't worry because I have a whole video on that on the channel and I'll link it up there. Go watch it and then come back here and we'll carry on. It's really important for me to give you a disclaimer that the title interior architect doesn't exist in all countries, which just makes it even more confusing. I believe that in North America, it's illegal to call yourself an interior architect and interior architects in America just call themselves interior designers, even though technically they are interior architects. I believe it's because of a lot of technicalities and grey area between the interior design and architecture communities in America, so there's that. But speaking from a UK and European standpoint, it's not like that here. We interior architects very much do exist and there are jobs for interior architects at some of the biggest architectural practices. So please don't tell me in the comments that interior architects are made up. You guys also ask me a lot, do you need to do exams in order to become an interior designer? And the answer to that is yes in Northern America and no in the UK and I believe the rest of Europe. I believe you carry out your NCIDQs over in America, um, but here it's just project work and lectures whilst you're studying interior design or interior architecture. But for architects, there is an exam. Which leads me on to the topic, architecture or interiors? A lot of you ask me this question and to be honest with you, there's multiple reasons why I chose interiors over architecture, so let's get into them. The first being it takes three years to become an interior architect, but to become an architect, it takes anywhere from five to seven years. That number varies whether you want to become chartered or not. 
And this is just my opinion, but I didn't want to spend all of my 20s in education. Honestly, I just wanted to get out there and start creating cool and I know that there might be people that are cynical and say, well, yeah, but they can design a building and you can't. But to be honest with you, you learn a lot of architectural knowledge on the course. So could I design a building from scratch? Yes. Is it legal? No. <laughs> However, what happens when I do want to knock down a load bearing wall or make really big structural changes? I don't just leave it and run away. I'll do my designs and then I'll look for approval from a structural engineer and then they are the ones to stamp it and approve it. So it is a bit annoying in that way, but usually I'm not making huge structural changes anyway. And I think that's better than giving seven years of your life to education, but like I said, that is just what my preference is. I just didn't want to be in education for that long. But education aside, it's also actually a lot quicker to do projects in interior design than in architecture. If you're working on a large architectural project, you'll be on that project for years. Whereas with interior design, those projects only last a couple months, usually. <laughs> So I just felt like you get to be more creative as you get more chances to do projects within interior design. And thirdly, with architecture, you would learn CAD, history of architecture, the design process, and also the aspects of the engineering side of a building. Whereas with interior architecture or interior design, they're still CAD, And I much preferred the idea of completing a space with the soft furnishing side, such as the lighting, paint, furniture, installations, etc., rather than not do that and learn about the engineering side of things. And don't get me wrong, of course we learnt about the engineering stuff with an interior architecture, but just not to the detail that you would on an architecture course, if that makes sense. And also one of my reasons for picking interior architecture over architecture is that if you think about it, we are inside a space most of the time, right? Especially in the last two years. And I feel that interior design plays a much bigger role in the way people feel and act within the space. Whereas architecture simply dictates the way people use route ways and how people interact with the building from the exterior. I like to describe it in a way that architects give us a plain canvas to work with and we are the ones who do the painting. Although I'm pretty sure architects will disagree with me on that one. Which is actually something I want to dip into a little bit, not too much, and that is the snobbery from architects. Architecture and interior design have a symbiotic relationship, and there's no doubt about that, you cannot have one without the other. However, sometimes I feel that architects think they're superior to interior architects and interior designers, which I don't think is fair. I respect architects, and I know that I won't be able to do my job without their skills, right? But sometimes I feel it's kind of a all architects can be interior designers, but not all interior designers can be architects kind of vibe from summer architects, which I absolutely do not agree with. I mean, just take that show Grand Designs, for example. There are sometimes some gorgeous buildings being made, but then completely ruined by poor interiors. To spend all that money on a beautiful property, to then just make it ugly inside, you know, the bit you spend the most time in, I just don't understand. Last time I checked, you spend the majority of your time inside your house, not staring at a court and steel facade. Also, it's about people's reactions to their interiors. I wanted to move people. I wanted to make them so emotional and happy when they saw the result that they cried. You know, that classic TV reveal moment. And that never really happens if you show someone a front door or fancy staircase. Remember, people don't react to walls on concrete. They react to environments. And your job as an interior architect is to create environments that will ultimately dictate how people will move, act, think and feel within that space. Okay, so my next point is comparing projects you do at uni compared to ones you do in real life. The truth is at university, they get you to create very out of the box and avant-garde style projects. And those are not very common within the real world. The reason why they do this is to expand your computer skills, design skills, your creativity, and just develop you as a designer. But unfortunately, chances are you'll probably be doing much more boring and smaller projects in real life. Maybe not if you end up working at OMA. Okay, now let's talk about what you'll actually learn on an interior architecture degree. Okay, so here in the UK, it's split into a three year degree. And in those three years, you're going to learn architecture and interior design history, 
famous architects and designers, different design styles and movements, building regulations and code, how interior design projects are run, creating briefs, user profiles, schematics, programming and schedule of accommodation, plan sections and elevation drawings, architectural terminology, how to read architectural drawings, lighting plans, HVAC, materiality, computer-aided design, rendering software, Adobe Creative Cloud, 3D model making, how to create mood boards, sketching like a designer, interior design terminology and theory, sustainability in design, ff &E packs, architectural detail drawings, commercial residential and architectural sectors, the RIBA plan of work, conceptual design, and so much more. Another thing which I had no idea I'd be doing so much is presenting. And I think it's the same for architecture too, but in interior design, you'll be presenting your project and concept to your professors and peers weekly. And that can be for a final presentation or just a pin-up or crit as it's normally known. And for me, that was usually three times a week. And of course, no one loves presenting, but you do eventually get over it and learn to not give about presenting in front of other people. In our first week, I remember our lecturers made us do a presentation in front of the whole class, which was about 60 people. Nothing prepared me for that. Looking back, they definitely threw us into the deep end, but I'm actually glad that they did because by practicing a lot, that's how you actually overcome the fear of doing it. But this is just an FYI, if you really fear presenting and don't want to go into a career that has a lot of discussions and presenting your ideas 24 seven. But at the same time, you honestly do get over it and even can speak in a room of a hundred people as time goes on, trust me. The next point I want to prepare you for, which is it's a hard university course. You will hear that a lot from people within architecture and interior design, but both are really hard areas to study in. And I'm not exaggerating either. In my first week at university, I remember it distinctively. Our lecturers told us that it was going to be hard, but at the time I just thought that was our lecturers, you know, scaremongering us. But looking back, they were being honest. And I remember my friends doing other courses at the time and always asking me, gosh, sure, lecturers and the course has got you doing an insane amount of work. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Architecture and interior design degrees are infamous for being difficult and you'll find that you might not have much, if any, free time at university. And it really is true, I'm not just saying this, but I remember working constantly, whereas my friends would just turn up to an hour lecture, revise, do a test and then pass. And that was it. Interior architecture, interior design and architecture are not like that. You can't just revise loads and pass. You have to put in the hours because if you don't, it shows in your work visually, right? That's why if you're unsure about doing this course, don't do it. You really have to be passionate about it in order to survive, honestly. And if you think it's just picking pretty cushions and paint swatches, you will get the shock of your life. Also, degrees in general are just huge financial investments. So you have to be 100% committed and sure that it's the right thing for you. Whilst talking about finances, I also think it was a much more expensive course than other ones. Yeah, I know, it's, it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> and that's mainly down to the cost of software like Adobe, the amount of printing you'll do, and all of the supplies you'll need, such as laptops, cameras, sketchbook, paper, drawing equipment, ink, model making, and the list just goes on. Unfortunately, it's not a course where all you need is a laptop, pen, and notebook. Another thing I want to talk about briefly is job security. I find that a lot of people think that a career in architecture would be much more solid than one in interior design, which is actually not true. I would say that they're both equal. Think about the last time you went out somewhere. Maybe it was a shopping mall. Well, an interior designer was part of that project. A restaurant, maybe? An interior designer was part of that project. Hell, even a hospital. Interior designers design those as well, you know. And that's probably the biggest misconception about interior design, that you'll only be doing residential or millionaires' homes. But in reality, pretty much anywhere where there is a business, institution or community, there was an interior architect or designer that was part of that process. A question I get asked all the time is, do I need to know how to draw? And the answer is yes 
and no. So let me explain. So no, you don't need to be able to because they will actually teach you how to draw floor plans on your degree. But yes, you will need to know how to draw after they've taught you and even after when you go into industry and also clients love hand drawings by the way. But the good news is you don't have to be good. Yes, I honestly said that. I want to urge to you that you don't need to be Da Vinci level of drawing and I think that when you guys ask me do I need to be good at drawing, you're conjuring up images like this in your head. All you really need to be able to do is create basic quick drawings. It's more about the quantity and getting your concept across than the actual quality. Just as an example, look at Frank Gehry, one of the world's most renowned architects. Yeah, in my opinion, it's nothing to write home about. The reason why we sketch is to highlight our ideas quickly to our professors or the clients. All the sexy final renders will be done on computer anyway. Also, what is your plan if you don't want to draw? Mock up your idea on the computer every five minutes? It's just not realistic. That's why drawing is the preferred method. But I wouldn't worry because on my course they taught us everything about design sketching, so I'm sure you'll learn that too. That's another thing to remember though, all design schools are different and they vary from country to country. So you'll need to do your research in finding one that teaches you all the right things you'll need to know for working in industry. I have a video here on the channel where I give you tips on to how to pick the right college and also how to create a design portfolio, so I'll leave that linked at the end of this video. I hope I haven't scared or overwhelmed you guys with all of this, but I just really wanted to create a video of things I wish I had known before going into interior design school and I hope that it was helpful for you. It really is a fun and creative job, so I hope that you enjoy all the things along this path if you do decide to go down it. Also, I actually have a whole playlist on the channel about tips for architects, interior designers and students and I'll link that down below for you guys. If you're new to our channel, then I just want to say welcome. On this channel, we talk about interior design, architecture, illustration, content creation, graphic design and all that cool creative stuff in between. So if any of that interests you, make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. Leave me a set square emoji down below to let me know that you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new. And if you liked it, then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that, you actually help our channel to reach even more people. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.